Welcome to our detective agency. I'm Economicon, and there's a man in the Garden of Eden. Hello, Skinner Agency here. Mail Cal, said a female voice. Who is this? Mail Cal is seeing another woman. Is it for an infidelity case? Your husband's name is Mail Cal. Mail Cal Owen, she answered. You're his wife, right? What's your name? Isabel Owen. Isabel Owen. You want me to look into an extramarital affair of your husband, Milkal Owen, I presume. All right, I'll be sure to let you know whenever I find something. Ah, uh, I don't need any contact info. I already got all I need. If there is no result, I'll contact you in a month. An affair investigation? It's been a long time. Actually, I could really go for some holidays, but the boss has been disappointed in me lately. So, I'll keep a low profile, for now. Let's see what we've got on Mr. Owen here. Obtain information about Milkal Owen. In order to check the items you have obtained, click on the title icon at the bottom right of the screen to access the menu, then open the archives. Okay then, what information have we currently got? Info about Milkal Owen. He's a journalist working for the Crane Newspaper Company. Listed here are his age, address, salary, work history, and the like. Okay, so I'm guessing we need to go to the Korean newspaper company then, right? Ask around? Just try to be subtle about it. We clearly don't want him to know we're investigating him, right? Last update was a year ago. Let's hope he hasn't changed jobs or places. Oh, maybe we should have confirmed this information with the wife. You know, make sure it was up to date. Okay, time to start probing around. Choose where to investigate. Wait, we can investigate our own agency. That's curious. Okay, so clearly there's the quick newspaper company, and it makes sense to go there first. But, why have you given me a random backstreet? Now I'm far too curious, we need to go there first. Hold on, this person. Huh? What are you looking at? Alvizio Urbano, the highest authority in the local mafia, love of art, pornography maniac. Wait, the highest person in the mafia? Okay, we really don't want to get on his bad side. That may get us murdered. It's rare to see you here. Got some business partners around, so I'm paying them a visit. Paying them a visit? He probably means collecting money. Anyway. You heard the rumor? The rumor? Bodies vanishing from the slums. Ain't there a frequent occurrence around here? Besides, security is always so busy recovering corpses. Guess their burden is alleviated now. Doesn't matter. If it's criminal in nature, police will show up. That's a danger to us. Well, you already got the whole police force in the palm of your hand. That? doesn't surprise me for the highest person in the Mafia, but it really makes him so dangerous. I mean, he could kill us and then probably get away with it if he's got the entire police force on his side. Don't want to spend more than needed. Understandable. If you look into this, I want you to share with me any intel you get. Sure. You think I work for free? Got the gal to go against my orders? Oh, Albanzio, dear, sweetie, no, of course not. You just need to pay me first, that's all. This transactional, you see. Come on, buddy, you're a businessman. Calm down. That's not what I'm saying. Listen, unless you want to die a dog's death, you'd better go on living the smart way. Now, see ya, pal. Oh, I think I annoyed him. Ugh. <sighs> So I'm guessing something about the bodies stacking up is going to be important to our case. So clearly this is not a cut and dry infidelity situation. I mean, why else allow me to go and meet Alvanzio if it's not going to be important? Uh, okay, let's go check out the newspaper company. There's someone I know here, so why not ask a few questions? 
You! What you want? Came to steal info from us? Glenn Mayer, journalist for Crane Newspaper Company, member of an art lovers group, treats me like his Evan boy, and apparently drinks two gallons of coke a day. Two gallons? How have you got any teeth left? Oh damn, you got some nice bangs though. You sure you're not a vampire? Such obvious info as would appear in the papers is not what I deal in. Rather, I'm interested in someone who works here. Alright, who would that be? A certain Milkel Owen? Ah, Milkel! The guy is always busy. Well, even now, I can't find him. Does he go outside often? He's out for a story today, and it usually takes time. Cause he's thorough in his job. Always looks tired, with panda eyes, no proper time to sleep. Wait, if he's always overworking, and he's currently married, how the hell would he even have time for an affair? Uh, I suppose that would explain why he's always so tired, maybe? Hmm, so he's overworked. He stays late in the evening, too. I sometimes see him when I come back here at night. It's not unusual in our line of work. The other day, he was driven away by a commoner for pestering him too much. Wouldn't be surprised if he took the initiative to go infiltrate the morgue himself. <laughs> wait, commoner? Okay, so wait, what if he's not having an affair at all? What was that is going to be used as like some kind of cover-up? Like he maybe was investigating the bodies disappearing. And that's why he's pestering the commoner and going to the morgue. And clearly whatever's going on in that situation. No one wants to speak about it or know about it or talk about it. So clearly he's put himself in a dangerous situation. And now people have either killed him or are going to try to frame him for infidelity or something. Just to get rid of him. Either that or I'm reading way too much into this. A workaholic of this level wouldn't have much time to blurt around. Unless it was all happening within the company, of course. Although, I see no women working in this place. Let's get today's paper. Obtain the Daily Tribune from Cray Newspaper Company. Still the same old grisly types of crimes. Okay, um, you know, we'll go to Milk Cow's house. But before we actually investigate anything, I want to have a look at this newspaper. Journal from Cray Newspaper Company. Come here. The first page features a serial killer story. And the other articles are about as cheerful. Okay, so is it going to be talking about the bodies from the slumps? And is it a Milkal article? So don't think I can actually look into it any more than that. It's a shame. Turns out our friend lives nearby. It's a rather standard apartment. No human sign. It's the middle of a weekday, so he could just be at work. But well, we already know he's not. What about the wife? Maybe she has her own place? Huh. He is definitely married, right? I mean, I'm just saying, like, over the phone, like, we can't confirm whether that was Elizabeth Owen or not, right? I feel like we should have broken into their house. I don't know why, I'm just kidding. I, I don't trust anything anymore. I didn't even trust whoever was on the phone with us. The closest church to the back street, many vagrants from the slums come here to ask for charity. And so do I. Hold on a minute. That's the smell of delicious cookies. Oh, it's so nice to see you again. By all means, we have a surplus today, so please help yourself. Sister Maria, a nun from this church, Kindness incarnate, true to her name, resembles the Holy Mother, feeds me like a pigeon. Oh, we've got cookies. Should I trust the cookies? I'm just, I get so paranoid whenever I play a game now. Yes, thank you, sister. You're always welcome. Have you come for work in the back street again? Well, as usual, yeah. That's most of my work. I guess you can tell from my appearance, but I blend in easily. 
In the back street, however, I'm a square peg in a round hole. Goodness gracious! I'm sure you know how dangerous it is, but please be careful. Avoid unnecessary risks. Even just taking a look might bring you trouble. <laughs> Don't you worry, sister. By the way, I have kept this book for Damien. A book? Ooh, famous detective novel. He said he had borrowed it from you and promised to return it today, but was unable to reach you. Oh, right. I was forgetting my apologies. He said it was frightening but really entertaining. He wants to read more in that genre. Then I'll pick something from the same author. Okay, I need to get going. Thanks for the treat, sister. <laughs> Stay safe, detective. Hmm. So I'm guessing the only place left to go now is Skinner Agency. So this is where we work, right? Oh, that's right. I have to look into the number from which Milkel Owen's wife called. That is definitely a good idea, because I don't think it's going to be registered to her. Let's see. That's odd. The number is from a police station. Cross lines, faulty telephone. Shoo, just my look. I'll have to change it to a new one. Now I need to narrow down Isabel Owen's whereabouts. Wait, we did just find out that the entire police force is in the pocket of the Mafia, right? So maybe one of those actually placed the call? I don't know why they would do it though. Maybe try and set Milkal up somehow? I still think he might have been investigating too far and he's annoyed someone. And he's either going to get himself framed for a crime or he's going to get himself murdered. Time for a break. Hold on, what is this? Money was tucked into the book given back by Damien. About to look just now, but all I can do is return it. Perhaps the next time I see him, but today is going slow. Might as well leave it in the care of Sister Maria. Okay, we can go back to the church. Perhaps Sister Maria is still hanging around. Wait. Oliver Nelson, real estate agent, former thug, got forced to drink milk through his nose once. Did we force him to do that? Is that why that's important information right now? Why is he wandering around the church? I had established that it wasn't within his perimeter of action. So, I can't be safe here either. Sorry, Damien. I'll return the money later on. Oh, why? Why are we concerned about him so much? Is it because he's a thorn of fog? Okay, why don't we go back to Milkow's house, see if anything else has happened. Anyone returned yet? Well, still no sign of anyone. I need to check again at night. What about the back street? No sign of life around here. You! Uh, me? Wait, you are... Rosa Saxon, photographer, occasionally works for Queen Newspaper Company. Glenn's personal servant, born slave. Jesus Christ, Glenn likes to use everyone as slaves. The lady is not an employee of the journal, but she regularly hops up by for work. She's well acquainted with Mikhail. I'm just giving some info about a worker here. Does the name Milkel Owen ring a bell? Of course I know him. He often buys my photographs. Is that so? Actually, I was requested by his wife to look into his activities. Really? So he was married? Well, could this be relevant to you in any way? To me? Um... To tell you the truth, we're not particularly in good terms, so... Sounds like she's not the one. In fact, it's quite possible that he hates me. I'm a bit slow and indecisive to his liking. When he dropped a pocketbook and I picked it up for him once, he yanked it away from my hands. He asked me many times if I had looked at the content. I simply picked it up because it fell down. He doesn't trust me. I wonder if there are pictures of his mistress inside. 
You know, I doubt it. I bet it's gonna have something to do with his case he's studying. But yeah, that he's just paranoid about personal information. Or maybe he really does, just does not like her. Oh, speaking of which, lately, there's a nice scent around him. A nice scent? Yeah, like a perfume, you know? He's looking more and more like a case of infidelity, indeed. I don't buy it. I don't think it's got anything to do with cheating. I just have to find out the other person's identity. Got enough info at the newspaper company. Let's investigate elsewhere. I guess there's nothing else to do then but go back to our Skinner agency. Looks like I checked everything I could here. Oh. No? Well, it's not night time yet, is it? Still, no one has returned. Do I want to try and go back to the church instead? No need to go there anymore. Oh, that just leaves that back street, right? Here we are again. Could be faster to get Isabel Owen's address by stealing info from the municipal office. I don't feel like it, though. That would be a last resort. Could also ask some people with that kind of knowledge. Huh? Hide. Oh, it's you again. Jesus Christ, are you following me? Wait, that is the same person, right? Actually, I don't think it is, but you're both Nelsons. Hyde Nelson. Looks like an upright fellow. But is a corrupt informant cop to the mafia. Conceals his frail physique beneath oversized clothing. Oh, great, it's you. I'm in a hurry, so please make it short. I'm investigating on someone. Maybe you could help. Who's that? Milkel. Uh, Isabel Owen. I need her address. I'm not sure whether she lives with her husband. You mean currently? Well, of course. If that's the Isabel Owen you're talking about, she died a year ago. What? I was there, so I remember. They had incessant fights. It drove her to commit suicide. The husband is a journalist, so maybe that's why it didn't make the news. A year ago? I've been negligent with my updates. But wait, more importantly, who in the world was it on the phone then? Huh. I was right. It wasn't the wife. Then again, I didn't realize the wife was going to be dead. I thought she was going to be alive. It was just, it wasn't the one that made the phone call. The call was from a police station. Some cop messing with me? No, I doubt it. After all, I have police inspectors as clients. You okay? Oh, yeah. Sorry for the bother. Thanks for the info. Have this. It's not much, though. I can't accept money. People might mistake it for shady business. Oh, yeah. I'd hate for anyone to accuse you of being a corrupt cop, buddy. Why don't we give them the cookies instead? Truly the mindset of the Mafia. There's no question about its affiliations. Night is starting to fall. It was all a fool's errand. What am I even doing here? Trying to regain wasted time? Pure curiosity. Maybe it's just my nature as a detective. Time to go home. I'll take care of the info updates and all of that tomorrow. I'm drained. Oh, you're milk cow, right? You do look like your profile pic. <sighs> Ain't that our fellow, Milkal Owen? He sure is home early for someone who's supposed to be constantly overworked. Oh, stupid. Narrow stairway. Why is he carrying that heavy baggage? A person could fit in that suitcase. No, that can't be. Wait. Did I get this all wrong? Is he not investigating the slums murders? Is he... Committing the slums murders? Well, I need to clear one thing before leaving. Is he still here? You're a hard-working man, detective. Glenn warned me, since Skinner Agency was prowling after me. God damn you, Glenn! 
That idiot! Should have muzzled him. Can't believe it didn't strike me earlier that he would just sell the info. After all, he and I are in the same type of trade. You know what? It's alright. I wanted someone to know. Now, please come in. There's something I want to show you. Have you got a corpse? Did you carry a corpse home? I'm gonna say, if you did, I'm probably gonna be impressed with how far you managed to carry that body. I suppose you won't drop that knife. Not until you're inside. That's what I have to do. Otherwise, you'll just escape. I'm not even interested in your secrets, Milkal. Look at it from my perspective. I have no idea what you already know. I'll just spill out everything, then buy your silence. What? Buy my silence and blood? You know what? I will accept a bribe. You can pay me not to tell anyone, and then I don't need to die, right? Money. And new information. Maybe I will gain today's waste of time after all. Jim, we're a bit of a fool for going along with us. Alright. I'll play by his rules till he's done counting his tail. If push comes to shove, my stunt gun may come in handy. Would be ashamed to be defeated by a mere journalist. If money's involved, I guess it's fair game. Now, just let you know, my boss will know right away if you kill me. So think carefully about your actions. I'll keep it in mind. Don't want to end up in the can either. So, that's his room. There's nothing strange so far in furnishing. But there's some pungent smell. Like a heavy-handed dose of cologne. The perfume is strong, right? I tried what I could, but I can't get rid of the smell. Ugh. What are you carrying inside of this? A human being? How sagacious of you, detective. It's time to let you in on my secrets. You might be shocked. So I'll start with some pictures. The notebook. It's as Rosa was saying. Oh! Oh, those actually are corpses. Why does the second one look like Voldemort? Obtain pictures from notebook. Oh, dear. Careful. They're precious. Commoners wouldn't let me take pictures. So I had to sneak into a hospital. I prefer corpses from hospitals anyway. Not so interested in bodies from criminal cases and the like. Wait, so did you actually murder these people or are you just going after the corpses? So that's one of your secrets? I guess it's not much of a secret. I'm a necrophile, that's all. Oh, oh that's so much better than being an average murderer. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I find you incredibly creepy, Betty. What is that corpse? Hmm? I retrieved it from the slums. Hey, I'm not stealing anything. So it's not illegal, right? Well, I think the whole necrophile is in fact illegal. Wouldn't it be counted as discreting a corpse? They are destined to be burned, then spread over a flower bed. It's a waste not to look at them and touch them before that happens. I have a collection of pictures. My preference is for discolored bodies that died from illness. But obviously, this type of stench for when they start decaying, I have to dispose of them. I use my parents' bar for that. You sure are one deranged freak, Milkal. <laughs> Judging someone based on the majority is proof of how prejudiced your world is. I didn't realize the beauty of corpses when I was younger either. You know, I, I will full on accept the label of being prejudiced. Whatever you're doing to a corpse is just weird and freaky and you deserve to be judged, buddy. I'm going to kink shame you for this. You deserve it. How did I even go on with my life until now? Even when marrying my wife, I kept looking at her, wondering why she had been my choice. Wait, Milkow, did you push her into dying just so you could have fun with her corpse? C, 
See? I don't like pretty things. When I look at a field of flowers, I just want to burn it all. My wife, too, was pretty. You killed your wife and framed it as a suicide? No, nothing of the sort, Detective. She did it all by herself. My job's gotten busy, especially with the crime rise. There were stories every hour of every day. I kept getting home late, exhausted. I had no interest in my wife anymore. So she started suspecting me of cheating. Cheating, in fact, that was around the time I grew fascinated by the splendor of corpses. I had the chance of seeing corpses on the job. Oh, I had already seen corpses during funerals. But these are preserved, fixed, embellished. Fresh cadavers are something else entirely. Untouched bodies are a sight to behold. They have a vitality that even the living do not. I started going to play with the cadavers after work. That's the reason why my relationship with Isabel went sour, you see. Did she find out about your freaky corpse obsession? Yeah, I can see why that would drive her to um, take her own life. Yet, when looking at her turning hysterical, I remembered. I remembered what I loved so much about her. Whenever I saw her pretty face warped by feelings of anguish and resentment, whenever I heard her voice yell out jeers and abuse at me, my heart would race. I also got pictures of her, but they're not what I like. She slashed her throat before my eyes. She was still so lively, you know. I have no interest in that sort of death. How dare you even speak of your wife like that? What? I thought you and I were kindred spirits. We both like to pry into others' lives, find out what lies beneath the surface. Well, yeah, I may be morally questionable, but I have my ethical boundaries, buddy. You don't seem to have any of that. Do you know what? I find you weirder than cannibals. And that's saying a lot. I mean, technically, both of them desecrate corpses, but I don't know. Eating the corpse feels weird, uh, well, seems more normal than desecrating it. That's just a joke to me. I derive no pleasure from it. What a shame. You're still unaware of the charm of your work. Being a journalist is a vocation to me. Until I came across the first corpse, my life had no meaning. Or rather, my first true blessing was to discover this city. There aren't many cities where you can vaguely catch sight of dead people on the wayside. It's this foul city that introduced me to the deceased, and there are many more waiting for me. This is my Garden of Eden. Before arriving here, I had nothing. I just watched the others and did the same as them. Something was missing in my life. Something in me was left unfulfilled. But I finally found it. I finally found my own way of life. It doesn't matter if others can't understand. It's my very own form of art. In any case, there's no reason for me to kill you. I just go to jail. I'd rather keep enjoying my freedom. Nope, we need to send this guy to jail. And to think! I was thinking you were a victim, buddy. I was ready to defend you. I thought you were just trying to do something good and uncover a crime. But nope, you're just a bit of a freak. That's why. I'll hand you some hush money. Keep my secrets. Don't mention my stealing the cadavers, nor anything of the sort. If I hadn't answered the phone, hadn't mistaken it for a request, hadn't neglected to update my info, knew of Isabel's death, didn't cling on to the money and time, then I wouldn't have figured out this man's dirty secrets. You know, my question is, though, who did make that phone call and what was the purpose? Unless there's someone in the police station that knows what he's doing and was trying to get us to reveal it.
Now, just nod to show your agreement. I will protect my Eden. I will keep living in Eden. I am the one who dwells in the Garden of Eden. Just nod. You know, technically that makes your corpses the forbidden fruit. So considering the fact you've already had fun with a lot of them, you should technically get kicked out of Eden. Go to prison, buddy. But of course I'll accept the money and just not say a thing. Oh, so we have personal thoughts and confession. Do you reckon that's him confessing to his crime? I mean, if it is, he's probably confessing at the church, right? Let's have a look at the personal thoughts. I can't draw. I'm not the best at taking pictures either. Because of my work, I write a lot. But it doesn't mean I have a special talent. However, I know true beauty when I see it. Oh, is this... Yeah, Isabel. What used to be my wife was now lying on the floor, emptied of life. Whoops. Without thinking, I had tried to wipe off some blood that had sprinkled my face. Of course, there's such a thing as bloodstain pattern analysis, and I don't want to be suspected of murder. I'd better not touch anything. She's not breathing anymore. So let's call the cops. Yet, the timing is so perfect. Everything is going too well. Captivated by the natural grace of the corpse, I was stunned that a mere human could die so quickly. Never before had I felt so keenly the presence of God, now telling me to take what I sought. By some chance, Am I loved by him? Is this his blessing to me? Isn't he delivering me from all ties and granting me power? The power to love mankind? If that is so, then why did she have to die? It was unlike her to think of me as unfaithful. Unlike the person she was when she chose me anyway. Perhaps she was misled by someone else. Or she just fell victim to my power. Whichever it is, she is now banished from Eden. Oh my, time to move on. Once the funeral is over, I'll be free at last. In my Garden of Eden, each blooming flower will be a dead human body. I awaited the arrival of police in elevated spirits. Well, it's probably not a good thing to seem excited when our wife's just died in front of us. No wonder someone at the police station suspected you. Go on then, I want your confession. I'm not gonna lie, for a weird, freaky necrophile, you kind of look adorable in this picture. Good evening, I'm Mikkel Owen. I hope you enjoyed Man in the Garden of Eden. The partition screen gets in the way, doesn't it? So, how did you like my story? Oh, you wonder if I'm in jail? This is actually a confessional. I knew it. You just confessed to the church, didn't you? Do you reckon the sister already knew then? A little room in church where one may confess his sins. I'm honored to be using this service. Thanks be to God. Let's talk a bit about the main story. What? You think I'm disgusting? I guess that was the whole point in the first place. Then what else? Oh, are you disappointed in the bribery? Nah, that, that seemed pretty par on course. I mean, I did tell the Mafia boss to pay me if he wanted info, so... I don't know why anyone would think I wouldn't accept a bribe. Was the story short? Well, this is the format, you see. In fact, it's just the beginning. A longer story is cut in the works, set in the same universe. Nice! Is it gonna have more neck files? Ah, I'm afraid I have to leave you now. I have to go for reporting task. It was short, but I was glad to meet you. I'll see you next time. Oh, 
Ooh, is that going to be from the full game? Clearly the church is going to be important. Oh, I'm excited. I think this is from the devil. Damien, is that you? You've got, you've got far too many arms, Damien. I'm kind of concerned about you. I'm excited. As much as we don't like the necrophile, I'm looking forward for the devil game. Oh, yes, yeah, so I've got my cookies, my book, uh, weird corpses. What, wait, what's this? Oh, it's credits! Hi, buddy. Ah, oh, and here I was, thinking I was trying to protect you in this game. I will see you in prison at some point, I'm sure. Well, if you enjoyed your time here, I'd really appreciate you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. But if not, it was a spooky day, and I'll catch you next time, guys.